Now let's talk about variance. Variance is a unique feature of frame of motion that is useful in two ways. On one hand, it helps us organize code better, because with variance we can separate animation properties from motion primitives that use them. On the other hand, with variance we can create and orchestrate more complex nested animations. To see variance in action, let's start by opening model component and reviewing what we've done earlier. To animate overlay and panel, we use initial and animate properties, which is simply the object with CSS values. So now let's see how we can achieve the same result using variance. Outside of the component, let's create a new variable called overlay variance and set it to an empty object. Next, I'm going to import variance type and set the type of our variable. Overlay component can be in two different animation states, hidden and visible. So I'll add a property called hidden, which I'll set to an object with opacity equals zero, and a property called visible, with opacity equal one. So as you can see, variance is simply an object where values are different animation states and keys are some meaningful names that we give them. To use this variant, first we need to set variance property on the element to overlay variance. Then, instead of setting initial and animate properties to objects, we'll use string labels that we defined here. So I'll replace initial with hidden and animate with visible. Now we can save the changes, and when we open the model, we can see that animation works exactly as it did before. Now let's do the same for the panel. I'll create a panel variance variable of type variance and add two variants. Hidden, that will set Y property to 1000, and visible, which will set it back to zero. Then I'll replace animate prop value with visible, initial with hidden, and set variance to panel variance. Additionally, we can move transition definition to variance as well. Let's cut it from the motion element and paste as a value of transition property inside visible variant. One thing to note here is that with this change, we'll get a slightly different behavior. Earlier, when we had transition property on a motion element, the settings that we specified there applied to all animations, both when we transitioned from hidden state to visible and from visible to hidden. By contrast, when we set transition setting on a variant, they will be applied only when we transition into this variant, but not when we transition out of it. So in our case, these transition settings will be applied only when we transition from hidden state to visible, so only when we open the model. All right, now let's save the changes and confirm that everything works. As you can see, one benefit of using variants is that they help us make render method a little cleaner by moving animation definitions outside of it. The difference may seem small now, but it gets substantially bigger when we have complex animations that change multiple CSS properties. Another benefit of variants is that they let us create and orchestrate animations that propagate down the component tree. To see such animations in action, let's open the review screen and work with the list of properties, where we'll animate the list element itself, as well as its nested list items. So as usual, first let's import motion and variance from frame of motion, replace UL with motion UL, and LI with motion LI. Next, let's define variance for the list element. I'll create list variance variable of type variance, which will have two labels, hidden and visible. When list is hidden, we'll set its scale to zero, and when it's visible, we'll set it to one. Since UL element doesn't have any visible properties of its own, let's locate styles of the list element and set its background color to light gray for now. Now we'll go back to review component and connect our variant by setting variant property to list variants, initial to hidden, and animate to visible. Let's save the changes navigate to review step, and confirm that animation works. Next, let's create variants for individual list items. I'll add a new item variance variable, which will be an object with the same labels as list variants. I want to create animation where list items slide in from the right. So I'll use hidden variant to set opacity to zero and X to 100, and the visible variant to reset opacity to one and X to zero. Now to connect this variant to a li element, we only need to set variants to item variants. As we mentioned before, variant animations can propagate down the component tree, and that's exactly what's happening here. Item variants are nested under list variants, 
and they use the same variant labels. So in that case, we only need to define animate and initial props on the top component, and all components nested under it will use the same values. If we wanted, we could override this behavior by providing different values for animate and initial, but in our case we want to use the inherited values. Now we can save the changes, navigate to review step, and confirm that both parent and child animations work. Lastly, let's talk about variant orchestration. When we work with nested variants, we can control some properties of child animations from within the parent animation. For instance, we can specify the order in which parent and child animations get executed. By default, both animations start executing simultaneously. We can see that now list items start sliding in while the list is still animating. To make parent and child animations execute sequentially, we can add transition property to visible variant on parent animation and set when property to either before children or after children. Let's set it to before children first, save the changes, and as the name suggests, list animation will run first, followed by list item animations. If we change it to after children and save the changes, we won't see child animations at all, because they'll run inside the list element while it's still invisible at that moment. Another thing that we can do from the parent variant is stagger its child animations. Let's change when property back to before children and add another one called stagger children. We'll set it to 0.1, which means that we want one tenth of a second delay between each child animation. Let's save the changes, navigate to review page, and we can see that list items now appear one by one from top to bottom. To control stagger direction, we can use stagger direction property. It has value of 1 by default, which means that the item should stagger from top to bottom, but we can set it to minus 1 to reverse the order. I'll save the changes, get to review page, and we can confirm that items now stagger from bottom to the top. We don't want this effect in our case, so I'll remove stagger direction property. Finally, I want to show that it's possible to use parent variants only as means to control child animations. For example, here we don't have to animate any properties of a list component, but we can still use parent variants to add stagger effect to the children. So let's remove scale property from both list variants, get rid of when property, and then open styles.scss file and remove list background color that we no longer need. Now we can save the changes and confirm that when we get to review step, we still get this nice stagger animation. 